I want to start today's video off with two warnings. First, due to the nature of this video, there is a small degree of curse words which I normally don't include, so if you're a child, don't repeat them in front of your parent, and if you accidentally do, don't tell them where you heard it. And the second warning, I don't really know what level of light pulsation is required to cause seizures, but I do know that I want to warn you that if you're susceptible to getting them, you should skip ahead right now to the video time that is being displayed on your screen. Have you done it yet? Okay, I'll wait three more seconds before continuing. That's three seconds. Let's start this video already. When I first saw Extus or Eek Overlord, I thought to myself, Ah, not bad, but it should be a rare, not a mythic. It's basically a repeatable ghoul callers chant, and I can see that being a rare. And then I saw the backside. And... That's about all I can show due to my crippling fear of copyright law. The deck tech is an ode to my favorite fictional comedic metal band, Death Clock. My name is Ryan Explosion, and like it or not, I'm your host. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I had something in my throat, making me sound unnecessarily badass. Today we're going to be trying to awaken the blood avatar as many times as possible. To do that, we're going to need a pretty big number of doomed Death Clock fans to be gathered and sacrificed. And what's the best way to gather a ton of creatures for the slaughter than through token generation? And what's the best way to gather a ton of tokens into the audience at the same time? Spell slinging. Burn your own mother's face off with an electric current of wizardry. So today we're going to sling fat spells, create a bunch of little assholes, and sacrifice them to raise an ever awesome blood avatar. May he wake in war. Our commander who must die for the cause is Extus, or Eek Overlord. He's a human warlock that costs a generic, a white, and two black mana, and has a 2-4 body. He also has double strike and a magecraft ability that reads, Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, return target non-legendary creature from your graveyard to your hand. So like I said, cool colors chant, but with a legendary clause on it. The nice thing about Extus is we can cast him early and get value from him due to this being a Mardu Spellslinger deck with some useful creatures for recurring. And once Extus has served his purpose, we'll simply sacrifice him to one of our outlets, or just let someone kill him so that he goes back to the command zone. And now, it's time to awaken the blood avatar! This sorcery in the command zone costs 8 total mana, but you can get that down to just a black and a red by sacrificing creatures. Sacrificing this way can also pay for the commander tax, letting us get repeated castings for 2 mana each. Once cast, each opponent will sacrifice a creature. You'll then create a 3-6 black and red avatar creature token with haste, and whenever this creature attacks it deals 3 damage to each opponent. So we're going for a combination of combat damage and burn damage for the win. I will also note, there are ways to get infinite red and black mana in these colors, giving you the ability to cast infinite copies of Awaken the Blood Avatar but this deck does not run any of them. Most other deck techs I've seen on YouTube do show those, so feel free to check those out. And speaking of the deck, this deck is a casual focus deck that I was able to build for around $98.32 at TCG Player. So if you're buying it from TCG Player, it should come out to around $100. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And if you are, please consider using my affiliate links which can be found in the video's description. If you're looking for other ways to support me because I'm like the hapless adult son that you never had, you can do so by becoming a patron of mine at Patreon and get some benefits for it, like early access to deck lists and stuff. Finally, there's the free way of supporting me, clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. Section 2. Mana Fuels My Rage Now, since we're going to be wanting to cast ramp early, let's talk about ramp. We're running a lot of mana rocks today, and those are Arcane Signet, Boros Signet, Orzhov Signet, Rakdos Signet, Signet Signet, Thought Vessel, Commander Sphere, Darksteel Ingot, and Skyclave Relic. We are also running the creature based ramp spells, Burnished Heart, and Scholarship Sponsor. Finally, we have Wildfield Scarecrow to fetch a couple of lands out of our library and put them into our hand. Self sacrificing creatures are pretty powerful in this deck thanks to their easy reusability with Extus. 
almost all of these are going to give us our colors, we're going to be pretty darn color hungry when it comes time to awaken, so that'll be useful. Section 3, Cheat and Draw. We're going to talk about card draw right away, because we're going to want to do most of it with Extus in play. To get started, we have the red draw spells that have an additional cost of discarding a card to draw. Cathartic Reunion, Thrill of Possibility, Tormenting Voice, Wild Guess, Honor the God Pharaoh, Seize the Spoils, and Pirate's Pillage. A little hint, the card you discard should be a creature. Thanks to this being an additional cost and not an effect of the spell, we'll need to discard the creature before Exus's ability can resolve. This means we can pull back the very creature that we discarded to our Wild Guess, drawing us two cards for two mana, and no additional cost. In a similar vein, we have the black cards, Plum the Forbidden, Morbid Curiosity, and Blood Divination. These all have the additional cost of sacrificing a creature. We can then recur that creature with Extus. Plum the Forbidden is actually even better if you have more tokens on the field than you need, as you can turn those into extra cards in hand. Finally, we have Flamekin Herald and Necrologia. Flamekin Herald has the ability to overflow our board with value when we are casting multiple Awaken the Blood avatars, thanks to its Cascade ability. Necrologia doesn't have any synergy with our commander, which is exactly why it's in here. If Extus is not available to us for some reason, it'd be nice to have a way to draw cards anyway. Section 4 Token Army Activate! All of this talk of tokens, and I haven't even showed you the token creation cards. Bad Ryan explosion. Well, here you go. First up, there are the X spells, Secure the Waste and Tempt with Vengeance. Both create as many 1-1 creature tokens as the number of mana you've pumped into the X portion of its cost. Tempt with Vengeance can go a step or three further though, if your opponents decide that they'd like some tokens as well. What a bunch of idiots! Our other instants and sorceries that create creature tokens are Call the Copper Coats, which does absolute work in battle cruiser metas, Conqueror's Pledge, Increasing Devotion, Ink Shield, which can be a solid FU to an attacking opponent, and Storm Herd. The creature that creates tokens is Chittering Witch. It's also a sacrifice outlet that can remove indestructible creatures, so that's nice. Section 5 Do Stuff, Get Things. Creating tokens and slinging spells is pretty fun, but what's even more fun is getting some kind of a reward for doing it. To give us a reward for spell slinging, we have Electrostatic Field, Firebrand Archer, Gutter Snipe, Young Pyromancer, Monastery Mentor, and Sedgemore Witch. To give us a reward for making tons of tiny tokens, we have Impact Tremors. It's really nice to create 10 soldiers with increasing devotion, another token with Sedgemore Witch, and then ping each opponent for 11 damage with Impact Tremors. Section 6 Burn for the Commando. Alright, we're on to our removal section. Or, more accurately, we're on to burn spells, or spells that destroy and then burn. The reason for all this burning is because we're also running Blaze Commando as a token generator. Yeah, I didn't mention him earlier because everything that triggers him is in this section. So, really it's his section. Blaze Commando says, Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage, create two 1-1 red and white soldier creature tokens. So our burn spells are these. Chain Lightning, Chain of Plasma, Pyromatics, Collective Defiance, Fiery Confluence, and Incendiary Command. Notice that every single one of these has the ability to deal more than one instance of direct damage. If they deal damage twice, you'll create four tokens with Blaze Commando. It's sometimes in your best interest to actually target your own tokens with Chain Lightning and Chain of Plasma because of this since you'll effectively be doubling your tokens for each one you destroy. And our direct removal spells are Smash to Smithereens, Orim's Thunder, Aftershock, which deals damage to us, but Blaze Commando doesn't care who, and Agonizing Demise, which is funny against Emrakul, until you realize she has protection from instance. What a jerk! It's worth mentioning that because some of our removal is direct damage, it is a little bit flimsy. If you're not a fan of that, I suggest removing the burn and blaze commando altogether and adding in some harder removal. We're also running some board wipes. These ones don't include burn, at least not in the literal sense. These are Blot Out the Sky, which is why we're running a couple of indestructible mana dorks, Martial Coup, and Skullstorm, which is best cast after you've awakened a couple of times. Section 7 
random shit. We're owning a lot of cards that don't have big sections devoted to them. This seems like a good place to lump them all together. First up, we have the cards that copy an instant or sorcery. Those are Bonus Round and Mirari. We also have the protection spells for Exodus, Dark Privilege, General's Enforcer, which doubles as Graveyard Hate, and Fanatical Devotion. Finally, Commander's Insignia can do some insane work in this deck if you cast Awaken the Blood Avatar a couple of times. Those are going to be some big avatars. Section 8. Make the land that must be making. Alright, let's talk land. As usual, there are utility lands in place that help cover up weaknesses in the rest of our deck. These are going to be Bojuka Bog, Ghost Quarter, Tectonic Edge, Haunted Fengraph, Rogue's Passage, and Reliquary Tower. We also have the Color Fixing Lands, Ash Barrens, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, Myriad Landscape, and the Thriving Lands, Thriving Bluff, Heath, and more. There are a couple more tap lands than I prefer here, but having red and black will be important later on, and having white gets us to our tokens, and those are pretty important. Finally, our basic lands are 8 mountains, 8 plains, and 6 swamps. Welcome, where we go from one metal band to another, as we get into the final 5 cards of this deck in a segment that I have christened... The Final Countdown! Today's final countdown is going to count down the 5 cards that are the most underrated awesomeness of infinite hells. <laughs> Sorry, I mean they're cards that could fly under the radar on their own, but work in abusable ways in this deck. At number 5 we have our least predictable card, Quark the Thumbless. There are times where this can go terribly wrong. When you've pumped X equals 11 into Secure the Waste, you don't really want to lose that flip. That said, most of these spells are fairly small, and Exodus's Magecraft ability triggers whether we win the flip or lose, netting us extra graveyard recursion. Quark can be really good or really bad, but overall, he's more good than bad. Number 4 presents us with our first token doubler. No, it's not Anointed Procession. That card sucks, costing $50. It's Requiem Angel. Sure, it doesn't double our tokens when they first enter play, but since we've got a Sacrifice Outlet in our command zone, we don't really need it to. Cast Awaken the Blood Avatar with one set of tokens, and Requiem Angel will create another set of them for you to cast Awaken the Blood Avatar all over again. Speaking of token doublers, our second one comes in at number 3. No, it's still not Anointed Procession. Get away from me with your pop cards. I want cards that are dark and underrated. Number 3 is Thalys, Reverent Medium. She'll create spirit tokens equal to the number of tokens you created this turn at the beginning of the next end step. This is super good when casting an instant like Secure the Waste or Call the Coppercoats during someone else's turn. It's like all of your tokens have haste suddenly. She can't be recurred by Extus though, so either use Haunted Fengraph on her, or don't let her die like a wuss. Remember when I said this deck doesn't have any infinite mana combos that I'm aware of? Well, it does have our number 2 card, Storm Kiln Artist, so it's possible that an infinite combo may have slipped through the cracks and made it into this deck. I mean, I have a couple of fork spells, so who knows? Maybe there's a way. In any case, I left out Chain of Smog because I tend to avoid 2 card infinite combos when I play. If you want to make infinite mana so you can awaken the Blood Avatar infinite times, I say go for it. But whatever the case, Storm Kiln Artist is still great in this deck. He'll produce a mana of any color for us each time we cast or copy an instant or sorcery. That means we only need half the mana we'd normally need when casting multiple copies of Awaken the Blood Avatar. Oh wait, ah, oh, I've put Chain of Plasma in here, haven't I? Well, that's not infinite, but however much life you've got divided by three, that might be enough to win the game with. This brings us to our final card in the 99, also known as number one. What's funnier than killing your opponent with direct damage and tokens? How about turning Exodus' double strike ability into something useful? Number one is Fallen Ideal, and it's going to turn Exodus into a Voltron win. It gives him flying, he already has double strike, and if you sacrifice five piddly little tokens to Fallen Ideal, Exodus will deal 22 commander damage when he hits. Congratulations, you sneaky jerk. 
You just won the game through Voltroning a two-power commander with one card. Well, that's the end of our most metal episode yet. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Unless you've already clicked them, which would undo your earlier click. Don't do that! Up next is going to be a Golgari Strixhaven deck, with a little bit of extra meaning attached to it for me. I hope to have you around for that episode, and it should be releasing about a week from now. Now go and kick some ass, you, uh, ass kickers.